Welcome back, maybe, if some of you have attended multiple symposium sessions today. Welcome for the first time if you are just joining us. If you can go ahead, everyone, I'm going to give a couple minutes for people to join, but if you can go ahead and say hello in chat. All right, I see those hellos starting to roll in. I think today we have already asked you where you are tuning in from. We've asked you your favorite color. So I'm going to go totally off book and ask you your favorite dessert. It's only 3.30 in the afternoon here in New York, and I'm already thinking dessert. So pop in the chat what your favorite dessert is. Seeing a lot of variety already. Love it. <laughs> Someone said pie, getting me in the mood for the holidays already. Awesome. All right. Well, you all are sharing with us your names and your favorite desserts. I'm going to go ahead and launch into our presentation. So. Like I said, welcome back, or maybe welcome for the first time to the Surface Design Symposium. Um, in this session, we're going to talk about creating seamless repeat patterns in GIMP. But before we do that, I just want to give you a little information. Today's event is being co-presented by Spoonflower and Craft Industry Alliance. My name is Jesse Katz-Greenberg. I'm the Artist Community Manager here at Spoonflower. Spoonflower is a print-on-demand manufacturer that produces wallpaper, home decor, and fabric. Our online global marketplace connects makers and consumers with independent artists all over the world who earn royalties every time their designs are purchased. Any artist can set up shop now at spoonflower.com to start growing your surface design business. Um, I already see a couple people asking if this if there'll be a replay available for this session. And yes, just know if you miss anything, we are gonna share replays on the Spoonflower blog within the next few weeks. Um, Craft Industry Alliance, our co-presenter, they know that building a business is a lot of hard work and you don't need to go it alone. Craft Industry Alliance is a community for craft professionals where you can get advice and support every single day. Build your network alongside other artists and makers, plus get in-depth coverage of craft industry news and ideas, tools and resources to help you make smart decisions. And you can join and learn more at craftindustryalliance.org. And with that, I know we are all here to learn about creating patterns in GIMP. So Gaia, I am going to head into the background. I will see you all in chat and I'll let you tell us a little bit more about yourself and launch into your presentation. Okay. <laughs> so welcome to this class. And, uh, you know, I am Gaia Marfurt from Italy. And today I will teach you how to create a seamless pattern with GIMP, so with a, a free software. And uh, so if you don't have it, you can go on GIMP.org GIMP and uh, free download it. And um, so what are we going to learn? Uh, I will teach you how to draw in digital with a, with a tablet. But if you, uh, if you don't have a tablet, you can still use GIMP. And uh, about three or four years ago, I, I, made, uh, I already made a tutorial for Spoonflower. You can find it uh, going on in the blog. Maybe Jesse can uh, share the link. And you can find a free tutorial where you can start using GIMP with your own sketches with your illustrations made with uh, traditional art supplies with gouache watercolor you know you can import your drawings and create a seamless pattern uh, with GIMP but today uh, we learn to draw digital with a tablet okay and we'll do a seamless uh, pattern so I'm going to show you my own process because you know with this kind of software you can do things in so many different ways and I'm going to teach you my favorite process to create patterns and um, I'll show you only the main tools I use because there are so many tools in this kind of software of course and uh, I think that at the end of this uh, workshop you you will be able to you will be so enough confident to start learning a lot more just by yourself experimenting other brushes you know other things and uh, what else and and I wish also to show you how to create textures because um, when you do a pattern you also need 
a seamless texture, you know? And so we are going to see also this, uh, this really useful thing, okay? Uh, so, um, okay, without, I, I have to put my timer because I have to see how long uh, it, it's uh, the, the class because, you know, at the end, I will answer all your questions. So <laughs> it's better to have a timer. Okay, I will start uh, sharing my uh, my screen. So I will ask for the GIMP window. Okay, I'm starting to share it. Okay, uh, I am. Uh, it's the window is smaller. I did it really small because in this way you should be able to see. Uh, you should be able to see better all the icons. You know all the um, uh, all the icons here and and the things. Okay, it's not really uh, good for me. I, I would like to work with a bigger window, but I think you will be able to see better. Okay, what I'm going to to click. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's start giving a look to this software, okay? When you open GIMP for the first time, uh, you will probably have already have some uh, windows, uh, some boxes that are open, you know? For example, on the top left, you should be able to see uh, the toolbox, okay? And uh, below the toolbox, you should be able to see the tool options uh, box okay for example if i click uh, on uh, the brush icon you will see below all the options for the brush okay but if i click on the bucket you will see other options of course okay so this is the op option tools box <laughs> okay another important window that you should already see is uh, uh, on the bottom right it's the layers window okay because we are going to use it it's uh, really important to have it and if you can't see any of these uh, windows boxes you can find them all going on the main menu on windows and here you can see the toolbox you can also call the toolbox using the keyboard ctrl d okay and if you go on dockable dialogues you will see there are so many windows but uh, we don't need all of them of course so you will see the layers okay you can open it and uh, what else the um, the option the tool options okay so if you can see them you can find them here this is important because sometimes you can just close uh, accidentally of a window and then you get lost oh my god where are all my tools you can find all them here <laughs> so um now we can start creating our file so you go on file new and uh, when you open uh, and uh, when you create your file you can choose of course the size okay um today we are creating a, a small pattern so just 2000 pixel for 2000 but i usually uh, work with a bigger size i usually create uh, patterns that are 4000 for and 4000 and you know that you can change here pixel with inches if if you prefer or with yards this can be really useful when you are planning for example a tutorial uh, so you need a fat quarter um, size, you know, uh, for spoon flower, and also uh, uh, the yards are useful when you are planning um, cut and sew projects. You know, uh, I once made I made um, a costume for Halloween. There was a challenge, and you had to do um, a dress for Halloween, and so this is useful to to change here pixel with uh, yards or inches okay if you need it and then uh, another really important thing to do is uh, you have to go here on advanced options okay and uh, here you can you you can see um, the the resolution 
uh, you need at least 150 uh, pixels for inch, okay? Because we are going to print this drawing and we need high resolution. I usually work with a 300 pixel for inch. And, um, but if your laptop is not so good, uh, you have not so much uh, memory, so much RAM, it, it's enough 150, okay? And then last thing to say is uh, that I prefer to work with all transparent layers. And so you have to change here fill width. Maybe you have foreground color, maybe, and you have to change it with transparency because you have to know that there are two kinds of layers. There are layers with a background. And when you try to cut something on this kind of layer, you will never see what's below this layer okay you will see a background color okay so it's it can't be transparent this kind of layer and uh, i find this thing so confusing i i hate this kind of uh, of layers really so i highly recommend to work always with transparent layers okay gaia sorry i'm going to interrupt for one moment it looks like we lost your mouse and we weren't seeing what you were um what you were sharing. Okay. Um, so let's see. Oh, I see your mouse now. Can you see it now? Um, um, can you see this window? The um, You know, it started with new document. I wonder if you're new, we're seeing a window that is not the document you are working in. Uh, ah, okay. Yes, because maybe you can only see the the main window let's yes let's i think that's it so to, if we need to see if i can change here the i can try yeah we might need to share your uh, schema intero but schema intero is too big uh, let's wait a moment uh, yes take your maybe time maybe in this way but it's so Oh, this is not really good, but let's try in this way. Maybe now you can see the right window. <laughs> this is the right window. Um, we actually, um, let's see. Yes, we're only seeing the tools. Because window. you can see only one window when I open. Got and it. You can, and if I open a new window with GIMP, you can't see it, okay? So, um, okay. Um, let's... Uh, 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 I don't know if I can change here. Okay, I uh, this window, I open this window um, in the advanced option. Okay, this is the window. When you go on file, uh, open a new, new file, you have this window, okay? And uh, as I said, you can choose the, the size, okay? The, the, the size of the pattern, I, I put... Uh, 2000 pixel for 2000 okay and i told you that you can change in inches if you need yards you know and then uh, i i click it here on advanced options okay uh, you have to click on this plus on advanced options and uh, uh, check the resolution okay because we need a high resolution and uh, uh, so at least 150 and then I told you that you have to go here on fill width. Can you see my window now? Um, you have to go on fill width and put transparency, okay? Because I told you that there are two kinds of layers. And um, there some layers, for example, um, very often JPEG files have this kind of layer that when you try to cut something, you see and a color as background and they are not transparent you know so my advice my recommendation is try always to work with transparent layer because they are less uh, confusing it's better okay now we are ready to say okay and now you have to tell me if you are seeing the right uh, <laughs> right i have to change again the window <laughs> I think this is the right window. Okay, now I'm sharing the main window. Okay, now you should be able to see the main window because we open it the the file. Okay, I hope you uh, you are seeing everything. Okay, 
Yes, we see your window. <laughs> okay, because I I had to change it. <laughs> okay, and uh, now you can see our file. Our file is uh, transparent, so we have like a chest pattern because there is nothing. And uh, here on the layers uh, box, you can see our layer. Uh, the name is background. Okay. And now we can fill it, we can start filling the background with a color. So you go on the toolbox and uh, uh, you can click on the um, on this square, the foreground color, okay? We are never using the, the background, only the foreground color. When you click here, oh my God, I hope you can see this window now that I have, that I open it. I saw um, I saw your mouse when you were rolling over the like teal and orange color. Um, but you see can see the window. Style. You know what? I'm going to share all my all my um, all my uh, monitor because <laughs> it's better. So let's try in this way. Okay, because in this way you will be able to see um, to see better all the windows i open but uh, the 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 bad thing is that all the icons will be smaller you know yeah this is great though that we see all your screen and for anyone attending if you close your chat then her screen share will be even larger and you'll be able to see a little bit better um gaia we did get one quick question how can you tell that it's a transparent layer uh, what question i didn't understand um, you mentioned opening up a transparent layer. How can you tell it's a transparent layer, the transparent background? Uh, you, you can understand it's a transparent because you see this chest pattern, okay? Awesome. Okay, you. because when you have nothing on your file, you see this, uh, this, this pattern, okay? It means there is nothing at all in your file, <laughs> okay? And uh, and now uh, we are going. Uh, you and now I think you 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 can see my um, this other window, the color window. I called it uh, clicking here. Okay, you click on the foreground color on the toolbox, and you will be able to see this window and to choose the color you wish. Okay, so uh, there is this. Uh, spectrum this rainbow you can choose the color i wish to to use a, a green and uh, you can choose it lighter darker more saturated less saturated you know so i will choose this kind of green and then i say okay and now if you go on the toolbox and uh, you um you click on the uh, bucket fill tool okay on the bucket you can use it clicking here and now our background is ready okay so i hope you are seeing well because i had to to use all the all the monitor and probably now the window is not uh, the the perfect size but i hope uh, it's okay and um Okay, now we need another layer, of course, because the main drawing, uh, we are going to do the main drawing on another layer. So you can go on layer, new layer, okay. You can give a name to your layer here, okay. Uh, uh, I wrote my pattern, okay. And check that uh, the layer is transparent, always transparent. So fill with the transparency, okay? And then you say, okay. And in the, um, in the layers uh, box, you should see this new layer, okay? Um, above the, the background. Uh, you can always uh, uh, change and, for example, you can grab your... Uh, layers and put uh, one below okay you can do this thing you have also uh, two uh, arrows here to do this thing okay and uh, and now uh, a really important thing is when you start drawing always check on which layer you are drawing because this is something that uh, designers uh, um, uh, very often make this mistake because uh, you are drawing and you 
don't re remember to to give a look and you draw on the wrong <laughs> on the wrong layer okay for example on the background so check you 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 can't be in this way you you must be with this layer selected okay and then you start drawing let's choose another color of course so go always here on the foreground color uh, icon and choose another color mm, i will choose uh, an orange okay like this one okay and now uh, you can choose uh, um, a brush uh, there are so many brushes on GIMP that um, you will find group of brushes so if you go here I hope you can see the icon of the brushes okay here you should have the main group of brushes okay paintbrush tool that you can call also with the key on the keyboard with p um, and i want to show you if you click here you can see all the brushes there are many brushes for example just let's try oh my god this went out but okay let's try to use this one okay this is a really simple brush that you can use okay edit under paintbrush or control Z, okay? But uh, you can also, I want to show you today another brush that I really love. And so you can, if you click on, with the right button of your um, uh, mouse, you can change here and find other groups of brushes. So try to click uh, here, my paintbrush. You can call this group of brushes also using epsilon okay on the keyboard and here on the tool options the tool options went out of uh, my box but it's uh, still the same okay you can see it and uh, this is my favorite brush but it's a group of brushes so you can try so many brushes we don't have time of course to, to try all of them so i want to show you this one today okay and um, I will use it uh, with a, a base opacity uh, at two, so the bigger base opacity and the bigger <laughs> hardness, it's a one, okay? You can change the radius uh, how, as you wish, okay? And now I am going to show you how it works and uh, why I love it, because uh, you, um, when you press uh, uh, very much on your tablet, it becomes bigger you see if you press not too much it's uh, thinner and so this is so good because you can do something like this okay like calligraphy and uh, okay now let's do control control z or just go on edit undo okay when you have to undo uh, your actions and uh, uh, i love it because uh, 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 it's so similar to a real brush, you know. And now let's start uh, drawing something, okay? I will draw really simple leaves because uh, we have no time to do a really difficult pattern, okay? I'm drawing them with uh, uh, closed lines, you know, so later we can, with the bucket, we can feel it. And so... Um, I, I love this this part, uh, this uh, this brush really so much because um, because of this thing that you can change uh, it's it's so similar to a real brush you know and uh, if you want a thin line you can do it without having to go here and change the radius you know this is so good and uh, okay with the bucket you can really uh, fast you can. Uh, feel your leaves when you use the bucket pay attention on your um, tool options uh, window to uh, to have a threshold uh, quite high okay it, it's better and uh, um, i usually don't want the anti-aliasing here okay it's better without this thing I think uh, it's uh, it feels better the the leaves, and sometimes I double click to be really sure there are not. Sometimes uh, some pixel can 
remain empty, you know. So sometimes I double click to be sure it's uh, um, good, it's uh, filled in a good way, okay? And uh, always with the, the same brush that I love so much, <laughs> you click here and you can also uh, use it uh, like an erase tool. So you just click here, erase with this brush and you can go on your leaves, for example, and do something like this in such a fast, easy way. Okay, you can use it. And uh, you can also draw something erasing, you know. This is something I love so much when I do patterns, you know, that I can draw erasing okay you, you draw something that is empty you are seeing here the background okay i'm not drawing with green <laughs> okay something like this i can also write with this wonderful <laughs> with this wonderful brush okay um you can uh, change colors uh, in a really fast way always going uh, um, here okay on the foreground color you you choose whatever you wish and then you say okay and we start uh, uh, um, <laughs> still in a race mode <laughs> you can start uh, creating other things for example some leaves okay in this way some other leaves i am in a full mood let's try to do also a little fox here just to do something silly <laughs> okay and as you can see i'm just working without uh, these are really simple uh, illustrations you know and um, and so i don't need to do a sketch before searching creating my patterns and usually i just work in this way and uh, with this always with this uh, brush if i have to erase to change something maybe this uh, oh my god this um i have the zoom tool that is not uh, in the right uh, mode okay this is the zoom tool let's zoom in if i have to uh, to fix the fox because it's not uh, uh, good i just put erase mode uh, to my brush and uh, i start uh, fixing my fox okay in this way and maybe she's uh, too fat okay let's do the fox a little smaller you know but uh, uh, maybe you prefer to create uh, a sketch and then uh, to create a new layer and do the, the right things over the sketch, you know. Some people prefer to work in this way. So you can just, you know, you can always uh, create many layers. You, you will create a layer with the name sketch and uh, you will be able, um, let's zoom out, you will be able to, use, you know, to work uh, uh, in a fast way just uh, D dirty way you know and then when you are sure that you love the composition you create a new layer and uh, uh, above the the sketch and you work uh, uh, without problems um, now uh, for this uh, lesson i'm just working direct okay with simple illustrations of course because uh, it's uh, faster okay uh, and you also, you can also import your sketches, of course. Maybe you made with uh, real pencils some sketches. You can always go on file. This is important to learn. You go on file, you say open as layers, okay? And in this way, you will be able to open uh, another image uh, as a layer, as a new layer. So you can open your sketches uh, made with pencils or whatever you have and use them as a reference uh, when you have to draw your pattern of course okay now as you can see we need to do the offset what does it mean you know that you we are creating a, a seamless pattern and we need to add some drawings that will be half on this uh, uh, border and half here half here and half here because 
uh, a good seamless pattern can't be empty here you can't just feel all this time it will not repeat well you know so this is the most important thing to learn if you want to be a pattern designer let's go on layer okay you go on layer transform and now offset this is the most important thing to learn so layer transform offset you click on offset okay and now we can move our pattern in in two ways you could just change here the axle okay because i i want to start moving it just horizontally and feel so and put something here okay if you want to feel this part you have to move the epsilon okay mm -hmm. so let's start with the epsilon because we have so much empty space here okay and you can just um uh, write here 1000 why 1000 because um our square our file is 2000 so i want to move half the size okay and i say okay and now the empty space is in the middle okay and i can start drawing here but now i want to just undo this thing because i want to show you again and uh, because this is so important so we go again on layer transform offset okay i said you can just here you can write uh, on the epsilon 1000 but there is a faster way to do this thing you can just go here grab your um, your drawing okay you grab it and you move the 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 layer okay so uh, this is so fast so uh, so fast to do and uh, when you are okay with the moving you say okay and now you start filling this empty space okay so we are we we um we we'll use uh, our brush and we'll do oops i am always in erase mode i always forget to to change the erase mode okay we can start filling this uh, part of our um drawing erase let's do in this way let's use another color okay because i want something lighter for example this and i will oops <laughs> always erase mode and i will draw something else okay and uh, um when you need a color of maybe i forgot to tell you this thing when you need to use again for example this pink you can use the uh, color um, color picker tool okay so i click here because i need this color and uh, i and then i start drawing with this color okay in this way um so uh, i hope you are following everything i I will just repeat the main things. Okay, we are working with this brush. Okay, um, sometimes I erase, I use the erase mode as you have seen. Okay, for example, I can do something here in erase mode. Okay, and um, and what else? And when you need uh, to pick a color, you know you need this tool. Okay, now let's do the offset uh, one more time in this direction. So you go on layer. I'm always repeating the same uh, thing, so you should be able to to follow me. And just I grab it, okay, and I put this part of the pattern here in the middle, so I can better feel this part. I pick with uh, this. Uh, picker tool color picker tool uh, the, I, I pick the right color then always with my favorite brush I will draw some other details okay in this way and uh, um, now I I can say that uh, uh, this pattern is already a good seamless pattern 
you, you could already um, upload it. Uh, let's do uh, the offset again because I want to to fill here. There is too much empty space. Um, you could already use it and upload it on Spoonflower, okay? Because uh, um, it's a uh, it's with flat color, but it's good. It, uh, it is a seamless pattern, okay? Um, and so I'm, I'm going to show you how to export this file, how to save it and how to export, okay? You go on file, uh, you all, I highly recommend, always save it uh, as a, um, an XCF file, because uh, this is the extension of GIMP and you will, have all your layers in this way but this is not an extension good for uh, spoon flower so you have also um, uh, you have also to export the pattern in another extension so you say export as you give a name here to your pattern of course and then you can select here um, the extension i usually export it as a png okay uh, or you can also export it as a JPEG. You can find all the extension here, okay? For example, here is the JPEG. I'm saying cancel because I'm not exporting it now. So, okay, we are uh, at a good point because we learned how to draw with a brush, uh, with my favorite brush, and how to do a seamless pattern, okay? And now I want to show you how to add um, te a texture on your pattern, okay? Uh, so um, I made a, a texture with real watercolor on paper, and then I imported this image um, on my computer, okay? And so now I, I will open as a layer, okay? Every time you need to open something in this file, in this image, you open as layers. And uh, I am going to open this uh, um, watercolor. It's uh, an image that is just 2000 for 2000 pixels. So it's uh, right the size we need. And uh, okay, my, my computer is uh, quite uh, slow, but it opened it and um, and this is uh, um, okay this is our uh, texture you you can uh, find some free textures on online too or you can uh, import your own textures like i did okay you can do a watercolor a wash uh, some lines with uh, ink whatever you wish and then you import this texture okay now if you are following my uh, class uh, just try to uh, import an image it should it's better if the image is big it's big okay if it is uh, more than 2000 for 2000 it's better because you will be able to to create uh, the texture in, uh, in in an easy way but you know, this is not uh, a seamless uh, uh, texture, okay? A seamless pattern. So just to show you what I mean, if I go on layer, say transform and say offset, okay? Um, just to show you, can you see, I hope you can see it you know, on my monitor, the, uh, there are some lines here because this is not uh, um, seamless texture, okay? So we are just using it to create a real seamless texture. And uh, you have to use uh, this uh, tool, this selection tool. It's the free select tool. It's like uh, maybe a lace in English. You, uh, you pick this uh, tool and try to create uh, a really, um, a really weird shape, weird shape. Okay, it's, it must be irregular. Okay, and uh, and so you have this selection. Okay, now you have to copy this selection. Okay, so you go on edit, cop, edit, copy, or Control C if you are really smart with your keyboard. 
I'm not smart with my keyboard. And then you have to paste this, uh, uh, select this uh, selection that we copied. Pay attention because you have to paste as a, a new brush. So this is difficult because you have to go to edit. Okay. In the main menu, edit, paste as, okay. And then paste it as a new brush because we are creating a brush. Okay. We need this brush to create our seamless texture and you give a name to it. Okay. For example, watercolor. Okay. You give it a name and you say, okay, I hope you followed this part because it's difficult. Okay. And now you can select no one. Okay. We have our brush and you can also delete this layer because we don't need it anymore. It's not a good layer for us. It's not a good texture. It's not seamless. So just let's delete it. You can give, uh, go here below on the on the bottom right here, uh, there is an exit, delete la this layer. And, and now let's create a new layer, always transparent. Okay, pay attention, it must be transparent always. And uh, let's name it uh, texture, okay, seamless texture, seamless texture, okay, because this is the right one. And we say, okay. And now here we are going to use our new brush. So you go on this uh, icon of the brushes. You uh, you have to pick the the group, the main group of brushes. So you can just go here and click uh, P on your keyboard, okay? And you will see on the tool options the 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 main group of brushes where you can find your own brush with a name in this in I, I named it watercolor okay this is the main uh, box uh, the main group of brushes okay and you can find it here uh, so um, I repeat this thing because uh, sometimes it's difficult to understand that here on this um, icon of the brushes you have many groups of brushes okay we were using uh, the epsilon group Okay, and now we are using the P group. And so you can also um, click uh, to uh, on the right button of your um, mouse to find uh, all the groups. Okay, let's go on this one and you will find your, your own brush. Okay, and now this brush is really big and uh, because I have here uh, selected a really big size, okay, but it can be also small, you can change the size here in the options, okay? You can change the size. I recommend to use it really big now. And uh, uh, look at the dynamics because I am using the dynamics. If you click here on the dynamics, you can change them. Um, I'm using track direction, okay? Because it's better when you are creating <laughs> A texture. So it's there are so many things to learn. I hope you are following uh, in a fine way. Okay. So we, we change the dynamics with the track direction. And now you should be able um, to start uh, uh, check that you are working on the right uh, layer, not on your drawing. Okay. We are on the seamless texture and start using this brush like a stamp. Just click. Oh my God, the opacity is not uh, good. The opacity must be, uh, uh, oh my God, 100, okay, 100%, okay? And start just clicking and you, uh, using it just like a stamp, okay? You, you have not to do this thing. <laughs> you have just to click. And um, the track direction option is good because uh, uh, the texture is more confusing. How can I say? Okay. Now you can just feel everything in this way. Click, 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 click. Okay. It's like a stamp. But of course, you know that it's not still um, a repeating uh, texture. 
because uh, uh, we need uh, to give a look to the borders, okay? So just say liar, transform, offset. It's always the same thing, okay? We are always doing this thing. Liar, transform, offset. And now, look, I'm grabbing it, okay? And I, I'm putting the corner in the mid, the corners in the middle of my square, okay? In this way. And now you, you can see, I think you can see the lines. They are not good. Just say OK to the offset. And uh, always with our wonderful brush, we'll fill these uh, horrible lines in this way. OK, pay attention not to go half on the border. OK, pay attention to stay inside. And now this is a seamless texture. Oh, I'm so so happy of it. <laughs> so you go on layer. You say transform offset just to show you. I'm doing it just to show you that now if I move it, can you see it's perfect? Oh my God, this is perfect. Our seamless, seamless texture. So just say, okay. And now we can start using it. We have five minutes left, uh, maybe also 10. I don't know, because I want to give you space to ask me questions but now we are ready to to use this texture so just uh, um, duplicate it okay duplicate the it and hide one of these uh, textures okay this one we, we can hide it now at the moment and this one i'm here on the layers okay on the layers window grab this one and put it here below your drawing okay so we can start using it as a background okay uh, you could also merge these two layers if you don't want to have too many layers really you, you could merge them um i assure you you just say merge down and now you have just one background with a texture a seamless texture and you could you go on colors colorize this is the best way the easiest way to change colors let's put uh, dark okay lightness must be darker also the saturation no not the you the saturation okay and the darkness okay and you can change, you can also change the colors, of course, you see, this is so good, this, uh, uh, this tool. And you say, okay, and now you have your seamless background, but you can add this texture also uh, to the your details, to your drawing. So um, I highly recommend uh, to always to duplicate the, the seamless Mm, texture because uh, you need always to have one good uh, texture how how come to preserve one of them so always duplicate it okay uh, put one of it here below you you need it just as a reference when you have to duplicate again another texture and now we are using this one okay let's hide it a moment because we have to go on our main um, layer my pattern the layer with your drawings okay you go here you select this layer and then you have to pick a really useful tool it's the select by color tool but maybe you can't see it on your toolbox because you are seeing the footsie you are seeing this one probably okay the footsie select tool so you go on oh, footsie or fuzzy Okay, the, the magic wand, okay? You go here, you click with the, your right button uh, of the mouse, you know, and you uh, you use this tool, select by color, okay? And this is a really useful tool because uh, I can select by color. So I'm selecting only the purple details, okay? So now uh, pay attention. Now we go on our uh, texture here. So let's uh, make it visible. Now we are here, okay? We selected on our main layer, my pattern, but now we are going here on the texture. We say select invert, okay? And we say cut because I'm cutting everything else. 
perfect and now deselect everything so you go on select no one okay and now i have a texture also on my details can you see and i can of course i can change colors i go on colors colorize and i can change it because i want it to be maybe purple okay in this way i can change the saturation i can change everything okay so we added a, a seamless texture also to our details okay and you can do it again of course for the orange details so you will duplicate this texture okay always duplicate it because you need to always have a good one that you don't cut okay you grab it and you put it here hide i'm just repeating the same thing so i'm going faster because i'm just repeating the same actions remember always to go on the right layer i'm going on my pattern and i'm going to select with the select by color tool my orange leaves okay then when i've selected them i go uh, on this uh, on this seamless texture okay i make it visible of course and remember to say select invert because you have to cut all the other things not the details so invert and then say cut to select everyone everything okay and this is all we add the textures uh, to the pattern so i'm at uh, the end and now i can uh, answer your questions okay if you have any questions um i forgot to, to show you uh, how to use uh, uh, another really important tool because we didn't need uh, in this session but another really important tool is this one um it is near this wave. I don't know what's it, what the, the wave is, okay? But you need to learn how to use uh, this, this group of uh, uh, transform tools, okay? Maybe you see unfilled, maybe now you are seeing this one, okay? This is the icon. Uh, you go here, you click uh, here, and you can find really important tools like rotate and scale, okay, and flip some details these are tools that you uh, sometimes you need to know how to use okay and so uh, it, it wasn't important for this session but i want to show you okay just uh, um, just a scale one just to show you um let's um, hide the, the text for now just to show you that you can always uh, with this free select tool you can always select something some detail and then with this uh, tool you can go here and of course scale it okay and say scale and change the the size and when you do it you have always to um i want to show this thing because it's different from uh, from photoshop you know when you scale it uh, you will be working on a floating selection here on the layers this is really important to know um, and uh, when it is in this way you can also move it but it is uh, like on a floating layer okay and when you are okay with your uh, um, detail you are okay you go outside of your selection and you anchor it to the main layer. Okay, it was on this layer, this leaf. So I wanted to show this little thing because if you don't know it, uh, you, you could be confused when you try to transform something on your uh, on your uh, pattern. Okay, so here you can find the rotate tool and the transform tool, and you can start using them okay i am at the end i hope you enjoyed my my class okay <laughs> this was amazing gaia and everyone i don't know if you have had a chance to see the chat while you were teaching but everyone is loving all of your tips asking where they can learn more from you so we have been sharing your instagram and your website and your skillshare in the chat um we have a few minutes left so i do want to get to some of the questions that we've received um let's see okay. we, if you want you. to 
I know we've got the inception thing going here, but it's probably a good idea to keep your screen up in case any of these questions yes. um, require you to show it. Uh, first, a lot of questions about what drawing tablet are you using? Okay. I'm using a really, really old Wacom tablet. It's an Intros. I bought it, uh, uh, I think, 12 years ago. <laughs> it's really old. And um, okay, I don't know if I can show you, but this is. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big and you don't need uh, such a big uh, tablet, really. Uh, so I think if you don't have a tablet, you can buy a really cheaper one. But the Wacom are really good, okay? Just a cheaper, uh, cheap one. <laughs> you don't need such a big tablet. Awesome. Um, and we got several questions about the differences between GIMP and other design programs, specifically differences between GIMP and Photoshop or GIMP and Procreate. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Okay. Um, I know Photoshop because uh, I started working with Photoshop when I was uh, really young at the school. And I have to see that the Photoshop and GIMP are really so similar. Okay. Um, so switching from one to another, it's not not so difficult and uh, I tried to show you now in the last part of the session the the main things that are really uh, quite different so you and they can be a little confusing you know this thing that you can have a floating layer this is something that you don't have on Photoshop you know and when I started working with GIMP I was quite lost because I couldn't understand how it worked but they are so similar really and uh, but GIMP is free, and so I'm so happy of it. <laughs> I know also Procreate, and uh, I've been working with Procreate and also with Art Studio Pro uh, on my iPad because now I'm working a lot with my iPad because I have some eyes problems because I'm getting older. So I prefer to work with uh, the iPad and. Uh, <laughs> And um, I have to say that I don't like Procreate so much because when you use Procreate, you you are obliged to use so many layers. I hate using so many layers. As you have seen, I I found a process, my own process to work, where I have all the details, all the colors just on one layer, but uh, I leave this layer with flat colors because in this way, with the, the tool uh, selected by color tool, I can always change uh, all the oranges, all the blues, you know? So it's so easy to create a collection without having thousands of layers. Because if you work with many layers, I get lost. I always get lost with so many layers. I hate it. And you need so much uh, memory. So the iPad should be so... Uh, powerful how can I say so um, I don't like procreate because it doesn't have this tool the select by color tool and this is the reason why I used to work uh, uh, with my iPad I prefer to work uh, with um, uh, oh my god I can't remember the name uh, it is uh, art studio pro art studio pro is uh, similar to Photoshop and to GIMP and you have the select by color tool, okay? So uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I also use Procreate, but I hate this thing that you don't, you can select by color. <laughs> we all have the things that make us like one program for different uses over another one. Um, another question here from Andrea, what you're creating here in GIMP, is this vector or raster? Uh, I didn't understand. Uh, is this a vector image in GIMP? Ah, okay. It's not a vector. If you want to use a uh, vector, I highly recommend Inkscape. It's also free. And uh, I made some classes on Skillshare about Inkscape. So if, if you wish to work free with a vector a software, I highly recommend Inkscape. I can hear. Sorry, that was me being <laughs> muted, um, which is ironic because what I was saying was I just heard from someone in the chat that 
sound went out, but we are getting sound on our end, which means that the replay will be fine. So if you view the replay just to catch that last little answer when it is available um, on the Spoonflower blog, within just a few weeks, you should have everything. Uh, so we are right at time. I know we had so many great questions, but some of them even, Gaia, you answered during the presentation. You, it was like you knew what people were going to be asking, almost like you've taught before. So thank you so much for being such a great teacher and for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And I know everyone in the chat has been loving this too. So everyone in the chat, please show some love to Gaia as we <laughs> sign off here. And for all of you attending, thank you. I hope some of you are going to be joining us for the next two sessions as we wrap up the symposium today. Um, and Gaia, just thank you so much. Thank you to you. I was really happy to, to share all these things with, with you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, bye, everyone. And hopefully we'll see you at a future session. Bye. Bye. <laughs>